The recording has started. Now, Arthur's getting his water, but I'm Thomas Garrison, and I've been developing websites since 1996, start the business in 2000, and it just took off from there. Flying SEO starting in 2000 as well. Back when Rover was a pup, it was easy to apply SEO. You could just do the basics. Make sure that you had your meta tags. Make sure that you have your description. Make sure that you have the title and you have keywords. As long as you weren't um, over the density, which even back then it was still 3%. If you weren't over 3% density in your keywords on a page, you could pretty much hit the top of the search engines. Because there was maybe, when I started, I think there was maybe just a few hundred thousand people on the net. So today, that's changed dramatically. And I'm sure you've all seen that it is not easy. It doesn't make any darn bit of difference what you search. You come up with millions and millions of results. Except for the terms that nobody searches. And trust me when I tell you that there are those marketing people and developers who will address that by using. They will target those worthless keywords and say, I got you to the top of the search engine. So be aware of that if and when you are hiring somebody. And I see Kay is here. She hasn't been around for a while. That's good. So the question of the day is, is sales related to SEO? Anybody want to address that? Anybody want to tell me what they think? It depends. Sorry, go ahead, Michael. I say it depends. On? Well, you have e-commerce. Sales may be directly related to your SEO. Well, Whereas if you have... Uh, just a site that, you know, a postcard site to tell you about something, your profession or whatever. Well, like mine, it, uh, sales aren't related to SEO at all. Uh, my sales are related to the activities that I engage in throughout the community. Okay. So for those who are here, are we know I'm going to answer if you want for a second. If you were in the witness protection program, you're not going to sell anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, you wouldn't have a website talking about you either. Exactly. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> All right. These who let these people in? The question: Who here has a website, and they are not selling anything? Other than Mike. I disagree, Kevin, but you raised your hand, so go ahead. Why are you not selling anything? Well, I sell VoIP phone service. Okay. Whether or not the people can purchase a phone from your phone, from your website or not, that's not the question. Is there anybody who is who has a website and is not selling a product or service? Oh. Whether you go through the process like Kevin's got, where you got all the information and, and you want people to call so that they can purchase the correct system, that's a different story. But you're still selling. He's still selling. So who is not selling anything on their website? Kay? We all sell something. Kay, you said that you're not selling anything? Are you talking about conversions? Nope. Can you hear me? Yes, now I can. Oh, yeah. I, I You explained it. So, yeah, I am selling. I'm, I'm just, I thought you were saying that I'm not getting any sales. But, no. Yeah, I'm selling stuff on my website. Yep. And Jim, you said that you're not selling anything, not sold. You haven't sold anything is different. Are you selling something from your site? You're well, yes, yes. From your selling site. a service of coaching. I, I, I should have prefaced that. 
Are you trying to sell something from your website? Yes. yes. So the bottom line is sales absolutely is directly related to SEO. I just saw a bunch of faces kind of drop like oh, crap. Because how many people here would say that they are very good at sales? Ooh, Francois, I'm going to call on you. Maybe not right this minute, but okay. Maury, did you make a note of that? Sure. <laughs> so we know that you are selling something on your website. We know that sales is part of SEO. How much sales do you need? And I'll go back even again. Let's say when I started, you didn't have to know squat about sales. Kind of when you got somebody on the phone, if they called and they said, well, I'm considering your service. Okay, then you could sell them that way. But I was getting people to call without any problem because you're at the top of search engines. Everybody was at the top of search engines back in 2000, if you knew anything about SEO. Today, you can do all the basics and then do the refined parts of SEO, which is a lot of work and a lot of time, and it's not cheap. But that's still not enough. If you've been following us the past few weeks, we started out talking about how we are following what? the stages of the buyer's process, the buyer's journey. Never before, if I can even go back 10 years, we didn't have to discuss that. Today, Google's mandating it, but so are the people who are coming from links in their search engines. They want what they want, and if they get something they don't, want they leave so it's imperative that you understand the buyer's journey phases the stages anybody here not aware of those and be honest because we can tell you we have no problem we've been teaching everybody as we go along but if you don't know those stages let us know so all of that said, what you need today is applying the SEO. That's now, instead of being so important, it's very important, but it's not the final process. Now you have to think of every page in your site. The page that somebody lands on, and, and actually you have to Figure out your process. You've got to outline your process before you start putting pages together. You need information pages, which is for the awareness stage. They're just looking for information. Then you need to define more clearly about a particular product or service, whatever you have. Because the person has made a not a complete decision, but they're now looking for something more about what it was that they were searching in the first place. So you've got a second page that has to provide more detailed information and prepare them for the buy now. And then, of course, the last one is the buy now page. So again, it's all part of sales. If you don't have all three phases in your site, for each of your uh, products or services, then somebody's going to land on a page that did, they didn't want and they leave. Then there's nobody who can afford anybody to be leaving. You're trying to get the traffic. And as Jim said, <laughs> I haven't made any sales yet, but I'm trying. So Jim, I'm saying that you're kind of in this boat. Do you have a page or do you have pages set up for the stages of the buyer's journey? No. 
Sorry, you got cut off. Was that yes? No. Oh, okay. Um, no, it, yeah, I, um, my website is set up through GoDaddy and I, I'm about ready to kick them out and pay someone who can actually get me a, a more workable um, website. And it sounds like for what I'm looking for, it's a bigger investment up front and a smaller annual investment. Um, it's just a matter of, you know. Yep. Uh, and and before I answer that, I'm going to defer to Maury. He's got his hand up, and I know he's got something relevant to this. Well, it's it's just about when people visit your website, what Google's looking for, and, and you talk about bounce rate in the past. It's not the bounce rate that's necessarily so critical. It's that when somebody lands on a page that doesn't give them the information they want, and they bounce and go back to the Google search, that's a signal to Google that your site didn't fulfill the need of that user, and Google takes note of that. When someone lands on your page, gets what they want, but leaves quickly, but if they don't go back to search, that just signals to Google that your content was relevant and the user got what they wanted. So that's important to remember. It's not just bounce rate. It's do they bounce and go back to search or not? So I want them to see something on the home page that makes them click further and go in rather than out. We've got to stop you right there. You want something on the what page? Well, I'm calling the home page, the very first thing they get to from Google. Oh, that's the, that's we're going to dispel that myth. We've tried to dispel that many times in our group. When you search something, whatever you search, have you ever searched and gone to somebody's home page from the link you got in the search results? I guess I don't know. The answer is you might have, but it's extremely rare. Usually the home page is talking about several things that you do or sell in your site. So it can't get to the top of the search engines for any single product or service. So do not attempt to get your home page in the top of the search engines. Each page of your website is another opportunity for you to get a page in the top of the search engines. Is that clear to everybody? Each yeah. page. Each right. page I, I, rides on its own. The example I heard in a podcast was uh, using Amazon. A guy took a picture of his foot, labeled it a book on foot disease. And because there are no books on foot disease, he was an Amazon top seller because he had three of his friends download the image as an ebook. And he was a top seller on Amazon on his ebook on foot disease. And it was literally just a picture of his foot. So yes, if you <laughs> if you make yourself distinct enough, you will be a top in your in your niche. Well, yes. I mean, in his situation, in, in that specific scenario, he picked something that he knew was going to be really easy to get to the top of the search engines or the top of whatever, even the Amazon search. But in reality, it's if you have a page on even a foot disease, for that matter, I'll bet if you went to Google, you'd probably find quite a few. So it's, is your page better than the competition? The page on which you're working, is it better than what the competition has at the top of the search engines for something related to the page on which you're working? Robert, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, I think I have to sort of an example of what you're talking about. If, you know, if I have a user go to my garden shop page and they're searching for, say, a common milkweed, you know, the common milkweed page will come up in the search and then they'll go to my blog post instead of to my home page at the garden site. That sounds... In fact, I get very low activity on the front page. So that sounds like there is uh, some changes that need to happen on that page. 
If they're searching for one thing and a page comes up that's not relevant, that's that's disturbing. No, it does. They get they go to the blog post on common milkweed, and that's where I have my shop link. Oh, okay. So you're milkweed. You're pulling them in because they search milkweed. And then what are you doing with them? It has all the information about the plant, and then it has a link to or affiliate link to get the plant, get the seeds or the plant. Okay. So there is a call to action, but they are coming to an informational page. Yes. Okay. That's acceptable. That's what you want to do. If you've got pages that are in the top of the search engine, they need to be the kind of page the person was looking for. So it, it comes back to something that... Um, we had another mic that was supposed to be here today. I saw him register, but he's not here. He was having trouble trying to get the right keywords. So in all of this process, your keyword terms set you off as to what is this page about? So you really have to hone in on what is that page about? That's the, and so you have to understand the, the buyer's journey. What page are you writing for as far as the three steps? Now, how relevant is that page to that specific topic? So you understand how sales are definitely part of SEO. I see a lot of people thinking, it's like, yeah, this is a lot more complex than I thought. This is not these guys in this meeting are trying to tell us how complicated it is to do SEO. This is these guys in this meeting are here to try to tell you all that goes into SEO so you can do it correctly. If there's any part that you think about, nah, I don't need to do that part, then it's all for naught. SEO today is more difficult than it has ever been. And I'm telling you, I, I, one, two, three, we have at least three developers here today, four developers. And there's not a one of them who would tell you that SEO is just as easy today as it was back in 2000. That's, that would be an absolute lie to say that. And Google has made it more difficult. And I would definitely say that the the reason that Google has made it that difficult is because of all the black hatters, the marketing people who don't want to follow the rules. Google keeps coming up with ways to force people to follow the rules. And the rules are set for you as a searcher. When you go to the search engine and you want to search something, you don't want this garbage coming up that is unrelated to your search. You want what is right, what is really related. That's why you only go to the first page. Because if you go to page two or three, the more the further back you go, the less related that page is. To a certain extent, there are times when you can go to page three or page four, page five, and find a page that is exactly what you want. But nobody usually goes past page one. Generally, I'd say 80% don't go past page two. So, um, I see that Jim is saying that the buyer's journey is making you excited more than trying to attract attention. Yeah, it, you, you, Jim, go ahead. You got your hand up. Yeah. Well. Oh. Um, yeah. I mean that that tells me more than just oh, what would be attractive to people. Um, cause I know who my buyer is and trying to get in his or her mind gives me, uh, it narrows the scope of yeah. how do I improve my website? Right. But the other thing that Google does, which I have been a sucker for is I paid $250 for my free, uh, employer ID number for my LLC because I clicked the first link thinking it was the IRS. And when it came to the bottom and it said, you owe me $249, I said, sure. And then I realized, oh crap, this was a scam. Um, 
So the first couple of things that come up on Google are often paid sites that are paying to go above IRS when you say, how do I get my employee, you know, how do I get my EIN? Uh, these sites that charge you 250 bucks for a simple little form that I could have done online are the first thing. And how do you, how do you deal with those? Or I guess in a, the evil part of me says, how do I get to be that one? <laughs> you pay. Yeah. And you pay a lot. That's why those people are up there. And that person probably paid, well, let's just say 10 bucks for your click. And you paid him 400 and what? 250. $450. Yeah. So was that worth his time and money? Oh yeah. yeah. You bet. Maury, I know you're you're chomping at the bit. Go ahead. No, I just said, hell yeah. <laughs> uh, well, you know I'm a big paid ad guy. And Google's not stupid. They're a multi-billion dollar company for a reason. The only way they make money is on advertising. Google would paid advertising above organic search. You think that was by accident? Yeah. They have billions of dollars hired the best of the best of the best psychologists and experts that know how to do things to get people to do what they want. That was put there on purpose. Mm -hmm. And and Jim, Jim did what people do when they have a credit virtually have a credit card in hand, they're ready to go. That's why paid search works so well. Those are buyer mode people. That is what paid advertising is targeted at. And and they moved it from off to the right side where it used to be for so many years. And you went, oh, I know those are ads. I don't have to touch those. Now it's, I don't know which one's an ad. So they do that on purpose. They, yeah. they make them look more like, I, I spoke to you, Thomas, about native ads, making yeah. a landing page like a native ad. That's what Google's doing. They're making them look like native ads. Yep. They look more like an ad than marketing or selling. And so that's I, a good example of native ads. I don't search very much with my phone just because I can't stand doing stuff on the net with my phone. I, I like a nice screen so I can see things and sit and relax and instead of trying to squint and go this page and that way. But people who use a mobile device have it even worse because Google went from three ads at the top to four on purpose because mobile device users got used to, oh, there's three ads. So I'll just make sure I start with number four. Google switched it up, they changed it to four. So there's no love loss between me and Google, but you can't argue with the one that most people use. If everybody stopped and they said, let's go over and start using DuckDuckGo instead, well, it would only be a matter of time before DuckDuckGo put in, in implemented all the things that Google has, but it would take several years. So we would have that as, well, we've got another search engine that we can get up there easily. It really doesn't make any difference. When there are that many people searching for things, the search engines know that there's money to be made and they switch stuff up so that it trips us up. They want their ads to make those people money because it makes them money. So that's the same thing that you need to do is know more about sales. It's, um, I think probably the next question that I have is who feels that their closing rate is high? Let me, let me preface that. When you have a lead... <laughs> when you have leads what's your closing rate <laughs> it's like listening to the little birds tweeting because i got knocked in the head <laughs> that music that was playing um <laughs> so nobody wants to say what their closing rate is. Who has, who feels like they've got a terrible closing rate? Who feels they've got a good closing rate? No hands at all from anybody. Well, I'll, I'll so I'll use a specific um, 
part of my niche. I'm a family doc, and so I am on a um, a service. There's a doctor who created a website for docs to come and get free life. They get a one session free life <laughs> coaching to deal with all the issues, yeah. you know, specifically for COVID, but you know, now it's continued. Um, and doctors are notorious for not investing their time or their money in their own health. So here I have a captive audience. Someone's reached out for a free one hour service with me and they get to see who I am. And I've had docs say, oh, this is phenomenal. Can I do this again? Well, yeah, you know, just like just like drug users or drug pushers, we gave you one for free. You like it, you got to pay for the next one. <laughs> and docs make good money. And it's like, uh, no, uh, no. I have to pay for this? So I, I don't know if it's that. I, I've stopped marketing myself to docs because they just don't, they don't get the idea. So, um, so in that particular arena, I have... You know, uh, I've closed maybe one out of 10, one out of 15, where I, you know, actually get to demonstrate my skills and it's still a low closing rate. Tough audience. Uh, I, I don't know them well enough. I was trying to think if there's something I, uh, Moria, come up with something faster than I would. If we go down that road, we're going to be driving off the weeds across the lake into the trees <laughs> because that is a very, very deep, long talk topic. But with Jim, what you do have, I love teaching doctors how to sell because they teach you in school how to do proper diagnosis. And number one thing in selling is diagnosing first, not prescribing first. Unfortunately, by giving them that free hour, you're prescribing first and have you not quantified whether they have a problem and the size of it. That's why they're not coming back. You just have to flip the script to learn how to do the diagnosis first with questions instead of giving them all the free stuff first because you don't even know if you're solving the right problem yet. You don't even know what their problem is. If they admit to it, is it big enough? No one's going to spend $10 to fix a $5 problem. You have to quantify the problem. It has to be a hundred or a thousand dollar problem. Then they'll spend ten dollars. Right. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. But doctors are wonderful for teaching sales. You learn faster than most because you've been educated in school to think that way. Well, and but I mean, I think doctors are horrible salespeople because most of us, at least, uh, I, I don't know. Hard. I'm kind of. I'm in the middle, I'm in the middle general, generationally, but we work for a company that bills. So we never get involved in selling or billing. We provide a service and someone else does the billing in the background. So trying to sell directly and actually charge you for what I'm giving you, that's, there's something that goes against my grain. Right. But how many years did it take you to become a doctor? A lot. <laughs> Guess what? Sales is the same way. It requires training to become good at it. Right. I mean, I have some good sales trainers that I really, really like. In three to six months, you can get really good at sales. But with no training, you're guessing and you're going to struggle. That's just, again, it's it's knowledge is power. And all you're lacking is knowledge. You have all the right tools. No one showed you how to implement them in a way that works in sales. That's all you're lacking is just some direction on how to use those tools. You're way ahead of most because you, like I said, you have that diagnostic mindset. You just haven't been showing how to use it in a sales call. I, I see a lot of people who are awfully quiet today. And I know <laughs> most of the people who got their cameras on. Um, so those who don't, you've got to have questions at this point. And that's what we're trying to pull out of you. Today's meeting is about the fact that SEO and uh, sales are directly related for today's um, websites. So where are you with it? How much do you know about sales? 
Are you ready to hire somebody because you know darn good and well, it's just driven you nuts for way too long and you've got to start somewhere. And as Maury likes to say, if you don't know sales, you don't know how to build a website, how can you not outsource? Michael, go ahead. Yeah, just as a comment to what Murray was saying and, and Jim's query there, when when we're involved in sales, we need to think of uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs because people have needs, mm-hmm. you know, food, shelter, and clothing, the basics, and then they go on up the ladder. But people don't buy drills because they want to drill. They buy drills because they want a hole. And that's what Murray was saying to Jim. You got to diagnose mm-hmm. what kind of hole they need. Yeah. And once you have that, the sales should not be very difficult. It it should come as a natural flow. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to I don't want to spend the whole meeting talking about my specific thing, but as I as I listen to Maury, I'm thinking, I'm, I wrote a note, basically they come with a problem that is a symptom of a problem. And if I spend the one hour session helping them dig to the root cause of that problem, now I've exposed the real problem. I've shown my skill and that I'm able to take a symptom and get it down to a disease. And then they're going to be hungry for the prescription, which is, okay, that this is the free one. We exposed the disease that now you're going to have to pay to get the, the, the treatment. And I think that will work. So that's, and that's Jim, cool. It, you have to quantify the future impact of that root cause if they don't address it. Right. Because once they understand the future impact, if that future impact is great enough, they'll spend money to fix it. Yeah. So those who haven't raised their hands or haven't engaged and maybe not even have a camera on so I can see what's going on in their face, I really hope that you're hearing this because we're looking at a situation where, uh, and it's been brought up a few times just in this meeting, the problem. What problem are you solving with your product or service? If you have several products and services because they're related to to one another, but this one does something specific, that one does something more specific, then you have the exact same process duplicated if you just have two. So it's every page is on its own. Pick a problem that you're solving. Provide information about that product or service. So you walk through the stages for each of these pages. So if you decide that you're going to have one page about one product or service, there are three because there are three stages. So you're not finished with that one service or product until you have all three pages. Now that's in general. People like Kevin, you don't need stage three. He gives away his stuff. Robert, go ahead. You had your hand up. So you're talking about something like a, a value proposition. A value? Value proposition, is that what you said? Yeah, the value proposition, what makes your product unique or different? Well, that's true, too. The benefits? It's, it's in addition to solve. what problem are you solving? You also have to include why is yours better than Joe Blow's? Poof is in the pudding, but a lot of times you can't just say, I am better. Maury, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, and I talked about this early in the meeting, it's not your value. It's the metric they use to measure their value. Because if you project your value onto them, they will go into DEFCON 5 mode and shut you off and start rejecting you. You, That's why the diagnosis is so important, because you have to find out what metric they're measuring value in and speak to them in their language and terms that they get. That's really critical. Has anybody, does anybody remember the last time that they were somewhere for whatever it was 
and they were interacting with a salesperson, somebody that was specifically designated as here's the person who's going to sell you this product or service, whatever you were getting. Anybody remember doing that recently? Oh, yeah, okay. every day. To Michael, what did you, it, for what in particular? Well, I had a, it was a connection on a lineable, and we had a one to one meeting. And this gentleman, without knowing very much about me at all, launched into selling me uh, a whole bunch of things that I sell. <laughs> Come on, guy. <laughs> My favorite, pit slapping. That's what I call it. <laughs> I, get, I get web designers trying to sell me their services all the time. Yeah, all yeah. the time. I get the same all the thing. time. So when you hear this salesperson, and, and I want to back up because I want to say, if you remember the last time that you had a salesperson, let's say you went to a store or a car lot or whatever it was, someplace where it's expected that a salesperson comes along. When was the last time that you had a salesperson talking to you in such a manner and, and prompting the right questions, making you feel like, you know what, this person knows what they're doing. Anybody had something like that in say the last two years? No, not really. It's push Jim, marketing all the way. Jim, what was yours? So it, it's sort of kind of sales. I get emails as a doc. I get emails on an almost daily basis. They We need a doctor here by these headhunters. And I used to get mad. And, and I finally have decided I'm going to respond in a pleasant way. And I just responded to this email. I said, you couldn't, I love my current job so much, you couldn't pay me enough to leave it. Please remove me from your database. And the guy was nice enough to respond with, I have to at least first reply, that's incredibly awesome, your data has been removed. It was like, he gets it. And he wanted to say, wow, I'm glad that you're at, I'm glad that you have that kind of job. So at least I was saying no, but he responded to the no with a, that's awesome. Uh, I'll leave you alone. And, and that's at least good. He turned him down and he left on a good note. But have you had anybody in the last, anybody had somebody in the last couple of years that they really thought, yep, I, I like that person. And then you bought something from them. Does anybody have an idea why you don't like salespeople and you refuse to buy from them? Anybody want to venture a guess? Well, in my case, I usually find salespeople who have an agenda and it may not be mine. And they push that agenda and I walk away from it and they, they lost the sale. Now, think I, about, uh, that's exactly, I. That's you hit the mouthful, Michael. You can see you've got me stuttering. If you think about your pages in your website being the same way, that's what people are doing. You're pitching them because that's the way that you want to pitch. What's their problem? How do you solve it? And make sure that you come from their side, not yours. You have to engage them thinking of what does the customer want? What is the problem that they're having? And you're going to have to do it because it's a website. Unless you have a, a video that's sell, doing the sales for you. I haven't seen that, but that doesn't mean it won't work. I, I'd have my doubts. How long does it take? To make a video or how long do I have to sit and watch this video to go through your sales pitch? I I don't know, but I, it's it's going to be the same as a as a site with or the page with just text. In that text, I know your problem, and you've nailed it. Here's how to resolve it. 
Now you're trying to make sure that you that the person knows you can do it better than the competition. So all that stuff is in there and you're still going, this is just getting deeper and deeper. If you don't answer all of these questions, if you don't address all of these topics of sales, you end up with a website. Arthur, you think I should show him that picture? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, you end up with what we, a lot of us have as a uh, picture, and I'm going to show you this here in just a second. A picture is worth a thousand words, which is why I'm showing you the picture. Is this what you guys all have? You got the picture on the, you got your websites, the one on the left? But we want the one on the right. And that's what this is all about. This is the whole meeting is saying, we know that that is where you are. We know everybody's over on the left side, trying to get to the right side. There is no free way to get there. There is no cheap way to get there. And there is no way that you're going to learn in two or three weeks, maybe three months, but you'd have to spend a tremendous amount of time every day for that three months in order to be able to get the house on the right, the website on the right. That's all pristine and perfect and people are, it's very inviting. You want to go to that house. The one on the left, you're going, wait a minute. Even Halloween, I'm not sure that I'd go to that house. <laughs> but the point is, if you've got something like that, you need to make sure that you're more into sales. It doesn't mean you have to like sales, but you have to know how to target people via sales. <laughs> sure, I like that picture. <laughs> it truly is what we've all got. So it's it's mandating that you guys are asking the questions. Okay, how do I do this? How do I do that? That's fine. That's exactly why Art and I are here. We're here to help you either in the group, in these meetings weekly, or hire us to say, I can either consult with you, do it for you, or whatever part that you want. But you need to figure out at one point, you've got to decide, are you just going to leave the site that way? Because it's not going to change on its own. Or are you going to invest your time, which will be a lot. And if you have a busy life and you are taking care of your business, and your website has just been pushed off to the side, you need to hire somebody to do that, or it's not going to change. Now, I know a lot of people here are into some part of sales, but combining the sales with the SEO is where you need to be. Do you feel confident enough that in the next, I'll give you four weeks, but in the next four weeks, you can learn enough about sales to perfect your SEO and get to the top of the search engines. Any hands on that? Michael, you're bound and determined. I can tell you're going to make a go of it. Thomas, Jim posted a question in chat. <laughs> I can't argue with that. He's asking if you should be posting weekly on your website. Well, Arthur is telling Jim it's it's tough to get a GoDaddy uh, site up. Yeah, I mean GoDaddy oh, for up, SEO. Update a website. Oh, um, sorry, Arthur, go ahead. Yeah. Well, first of all, GoDaddy is tough to get to rank 
<clears throat> organically because they're it's really it's really limited you know for seo and and that kind of stuff you know basically with GoDaddy site you're better off using the social media marketing that's part of it you know otherwise you know um the best way to get a site to rank is always updating with a blog post you know add a blog to it write a weekly post focus on uh, uh your keyword research and you know that that's what they're talking about when they're saying updating the website you know i mean you could update your pages and things like that but once you get a page to rank you don't want to keep changing the content and you know so a blog post a blog is the best way to do that i'm glad you added that last bit because that's where i was chomping at the bit going you don't want to change a, a page that's doing sort of well in the search engines right you need to right. know what to change yeah so, so that once it can be in a better position go ahead yeah once you get a once you get a page to rank mm -hmm. fairly decently then what you want to do is you want to send you want to create inbound links from that page to other pages that you want to rank you know so if you got a page on roofing repair services and it ranks at maybe five or ten and in the uh, search results well it's ranking pretty good you know so if you want say tile roof repairs to gather some link juice from that then you would link from roofing repairs to that page and give and add a call to action you know like if you want you know if you want to see tile repairs or if you need tile repairs click on this link and it takes them to that page you know it's all about internal linking to get a website to rank it's not so much backlinks anymore. I mean, backlinks are critical, you know, but now the way Google's leaning towards quality content and stuff, I mean, I I posted a uh, link in the group about um, what Google's looking at backlinks nowadays, but it's all about internal linking. So backlinks can be very helpful, but yeah, it's like Arthur was saying that Google is, going even further going back um, which is weird even though it's they're going deeper now that's where everything started if you have a backlink and this is back early 2000s if you have a backlink it needs to come from a quality site right. a, a site that has good authority and that's no different then than it is today. Today, you still have to have that. If you go to uh, uh, Fiverr and have somebody just get you a whole bunch of backlinks for 50 bucks or 100 bucks, where are those backlinks coming from? If you're selling shoes and you got a, a backlink from Nike, great. Now Google's going to pay attention. But what are the chances of you getting your little mom and pop shoe store site a link from Nike? So if you get it from the guy down the street that's also selling shoes, that's not going to mean anything. It's a backlink. It doesn't mean anything. So back to kind of where Arthur was talking about and, and uh, Jim was leading to you got to be careful about your pages. If, the, if let's say you're in a position 30, so you're down because now there's no pages anymore. Google doesn't have pages, but they do another search engine. So the point is, if you're in the position 30, that's not bad. Don't be discouraged with that. That could be thought of as like page three. Now you just need to make minor tweaks in your SEO and maybe in the content but that's where a professional comes in so if you've done that well to get it to that point hire somebody because it's not going to cost you much to push that up into even the top 20. if you know that you've done that another couple of minor tweaks to push it into the top 10 and then leave it but you don't ever go back to a page that's say in that top 30 or even 40 and say okay well i'm going to revamp that whole page because it's not high enough. Don't do that. 
because you'll just have lost everything. That's on page 400, and you got to figure out how to come back from that. So when you're tweaking a page, make sure you understand how much traffic is coming, where that page is positioned before you touch anything. Any other questions on that? I know we hit a lot on sales, but that's where it is with SEO today. Those who haven't asked questions, even more, do you have a, something to throw in? Well, I'm just glad you brought up the fact that the same thing people do to you when they speak to you, the salesperson, they tend to do the same thing when they write because it's word power. And whether it's spoken or written, it's the same, right? And that's what people have to realize is that when you pitch slap in person, you're probably pitch slapping on your website too. And that people don't respond well to that. So that was a very good point. Yeah. Yeah, for my website, I have to have somebody write my content for me because I can't I can't get outside of my head. You know, if I try to design my own page on anything that has to do with SEO, I fall into that trap. You know, so what I do is I get a content, I get a professional to say, Hey, I need some copy for this. And then when they write it, then it's written to mm -hmm. solve a problem basically. And, and it's outside of your head. So even if it's not exactly the way that you want it, now you, you're you reading something, okay, it's not in my head, so I want to tweak this just a little bit because you know that's going to work better. But it's the starting from scratch. It's, yeah, but now I'm in my head and I can't get out. You're stuck in there. Don't let yourself get stuck. What are the, there's, I'm sure there are more questions that everybody's got. And we just have a few more minutes, so I don't want to lead into a whole different part. Mike, you're awful quiet today. Thanks, Gina. That's that's because I'm on mute. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was maybe to to help everybody else. So obviously, you know, I only work with really really big companies. The issues that they're all talking about. They happen with the companies that are making a hundred, having a hundred million a year in sales. Yeah. It's it's no different. It's you, know, you may have more money and more tools to throw at it, but at the end at the end of the day, it's still the same issues. You know why? Well, I mean, yeah, I do, and I can use a, a simple example. One of the companies, they're they're a component of a very very large uh, photo company. So their photo finishing lab, you know, and I'll go back to when you were talking about different pages. Yeah, if they're searching on photo finishing labs, we'll come up because it's for professionals. But what if they want wall decor? That's a little bit different. What if they want metal prints? Well, that's definitely different. What if they want fine art paper? I mean, so to do the SEO is, isn't a 10 minute process because you now have to look at what are these people looking for? And what do they want? Because when they click on those pages, I think a number of them, if you don't get where you're looking for, they leave. So it's um, yes. it's a challenge. It's it's yeah. But a lot of people, oh, you know, if I I think you said not only does it take a long time to learn it, but it doesn't happen overnight. But I will throw something out that you'll laugh at when you asked last week: Do people do keyword research? No, I don't, but my team does, and then they give it to me. <laughs> and and that's a good process, even though that that you might laugh at that. Uh, hey, <laughs> Michael, and uh, I'm thinking of going to Peacetown. I'm not sure where that place is exactly, Peacetown. Someone forgot to mute. Oh, I didn't. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Quiet, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> When you have a team, when you have a multi-million dollar corporation, you do what? You hire the team. They're supposed to be the professionals that know everything about the SEO. But what happens? You have the SEO people, the web development people, and the company people. Who knows about the business? Not the SEO people and not the web development people. It's the company. Who knows about SEO? It's not the company. It isn't the web developer. So you have these three teams. How many businesses can you go into that have taught the SEO team sales and they've taught the web developer all about the products 
so they can do all three things. And so, Mike, to, to go further into what you're talking about, these multi-million dollar companies, they're no different. They have a flip and flap and lot of money to throw out ad words. That doesn't mean that their site was built correctly. It's functionality and the coding is probably really well done. But is the sales done properly? Do they have this three stages in there? They just go, no, nah, just push it into the ad words. I bet there's probably more major corporations that you bounce from than mom and pop operations. So it's not like just because they have the money, they did it right. Yeah, the no. more money they have, they hire it out. Well, now you got to train them. You got to train them in sales. You got to train them in, in the development of the, you know, understanding the product, understanding what the, and I don't know that every company understands that part. The SEO people who they hire are going, no, no, we don't need that. Also, so, sales and marketing tend to fight with each other. And I go, no, this yep. is a team sport. Yep. You, you got you got to work together, not yep. not you know not disparate of each other. I, I can tell you, if you have a company that has the team, the salespeople have taught the SEO people and the web developers. They've all three of those offices have come together, so they all know what they're doing that company would make a tremendous amount of more money. Wow. But that's kind of where you are all today. It's like, we, yeah, but I'm trying to learn enough so I can do it. The problem with that is it's going to take you a tremendous amount of time. I highly recommend that at least you have somebody that you're consulting with just so you can say, is this right or is this wrong? How do I need to change this? You can do those things even if you didn't hire somebody to just say, go and do everything for me. Because if you came to me and said that, I go, well, okay. And my first thing is always sitting down with the person to understand their product and service. If I don't know anything about your business, I've got to learn that in order to proceed. And not very many developers do that. They'll usually just go, yeah, I can do that. And they throw something together. And as Kevin has had it several times with developers, yeah, I can do that. And they throw it together. And they didn't do, especially his last developer, did nothing that he asked her to do. She just developed the site and said, there, that's what you want. And it had, there were no stages in his content. It was just content thrown there. And it was all mixed together. Make that a point too, folks. If you have a page that combines the three stages or any portion of the three stages, even if it's, if it's supposed to be stage one and you put a little bit of stage two in there, don't do that. Go back and change that. Make sure that each stage is just about that stage of the buyer's journey. Don't combine them. A different page. Remember, you can have as many pages as you want in your website and each page will get to the top of the search engine on its own. You have to do things for it, but it doesn't mean that you need to add the other stages in order for it to get to the top of the search engines. Think of it instead as I put, I'm going to have 100 pages in my website, and each one you're going to develop four specific stages, with specific information so each page gets to the top of the search engine based on what it's about that makes sense makes sense to you kevin yep okay as long as i know it made sense to you then i made sense to everybody Slap. <laughs> 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 He's going to get me back later, so I have to hit him now. <laughs> you can feel the love. <laughs> it's nice to know I can help you set the bar so low. <laughs> and if nothing else, you leave these meetings laughing. There we go. <laughs> I think I came into this meeting laughing, too. <laughs> oh, see? Now that's good meeting. If you went to these other gay who's or 
at the same time we are today, they are probably boring and half the people left. Jim, two things I'm walking away with probably need to pay someone. Yes. After that, after this past hour, I know more what to ask. Yes, that's right. Determine if I'm paying really knows what they are doing. Yes, 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 yes. Before you hire anybody to do so, you don't hire a mechanic to work on your car unless you've talked to them and seen what they do. If you walked into a store and you happen to talk, get chatting with somebody and they said that they work on your type of vehicle, do you just go, oh, I'm going to have you work on mine? No. You're going to check them out, find out. Even if it's a shop, you're going to see how long has that shop been around? What's their, you know, what kind of cars they have? They got nothing but junk and cars that are torn apart around. I'd have my doubts. But you need to ask questions. You need to find out if the person is qualified to do what you need them to do, whatever it is. Tom, you made a, a valid, a really good point. Um, so say if I need someone to work on my website, what do I say to them? Do I ask them to do something to it before I pay them or or what? What do I do? Uh, if you talk to them and you understand you ask them a few questions that are related to your business and they answer as if they really know that business, then it gives you kind of an a, a, a open door so that hmm, they understood that part. So let me dig deeper. But if they said, yes, I've been doing this for 15 years, so I know what I'm doing. That doesn't mean squat for 15 years. They could be going from one person to the next, just going, yep, I've been doing this for a long time. I can build your site. They build a site and the thing falls apart. They don't care because they got your money and they're off to the next person. Right. Generally, what I do is if somebody asks me to fix something on their website, I have to see what it is first. You know, and I, I don't tell anybody that I can, you know, unless it's something minor or simple, you know, then I'll just go in and fix it. You know, it only takes a couple of seconds, a couple of minutes to do it. But if there's something more to it, I won't tell anybody that, oh, I could do anything. Right. You know, I first have to see what's going on with the website first. So I generally ask, you know, well, you know, set me up as a user so I can go in and take a look and see what's going on. Because if you don't know what's going on in the back and how can anybody fix what you're wanting done or do what you're do what you need done right kevin just yeah. jumped off and i don't didn't mean to wait until he did jump off but he did this i did the same thing with him he was saying well i want to do this i want to do that and i was like i, I can't tell you whether i can or cannot and i'm not going to tell you a price because i've got to see i've got to look at the thing so when you have a developer who's willing to or is suggesting that they take a very close look at your site that's a good step in the process to considering them to hire. But it doesn't necessarily mean that that's the one that you want to hire. You don't know yet. Go in and get as much information from that person as possible. Find out what they think, how they think, what they're planning to do. Ask them what they would do first. Oh, I'd move this picture over here and I'd do that. Sorry, I'm on to the next person because... <laughs> Moving pictures around is not what I have in mind, pal. Does, does that make sense, Kay? Yes, it does. You probably, did you hire somebody and now you're thinking back going, why did I listen to them? No, because I. a lot of people are in my M email and they're like, oh, we looked at your website and we can do X, Y, and Z to it. <laughs> and I'm just like, um, just hesitant, you know, to because I'm like, is everything coming from the same? Um, every, it seems like every everybody is saying the same thing. And these are like totally different companies. And they're like yeah. the same exact thing. And I'm thinking, okay, if my website is so great, you know, why are you in my inbox telling me what else? <laughs> yeah. It's 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 junk mail. Yeah, what you're getting 
those people never been to your website. Yep. At all. And, and all they're just, doing it's just sent out thousands of them at a yep. time, and they're just trying to they throw in a net out and they're trying to catch fish. And if you respond to it, then then they may go look at your website. But no, those are not actual <laughs> people looking at your website. And Jim, make sure they get in the spam bucket. Jim, you're okay. right in that you want your site to be about you. But in, in following up with these others, there's uh, you got Robert, myself, Michael, and Arthur, all our developers. And Kay, when we get those, because we get them a lot. I no, just we get try. the same thing. Oh, yeah. I never entertain. Oh, yeah. If somebody's sending you an email to tell you how they can do blah, 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 trash it. Okay. The best way to find somebody is if you go out and search. But I wouldn't start searching with the person who sent you an email because it's just spam in the first place. Okay. And maybe they're from India. Maybe they're from Russia. And they're just trying to get in your website and screw things up, turn it upside down. Yeah. All right. And that's another thing because if I do hire them and I set them up as a user, you can literally do whatever you want in my on my website. And what what could I do? Here's something that I do, and, and Arthur does too, and I, I'll bet the others also. There are a lot of times when I'll just go, hmm, I see this and I see that. Well, would you mind if I take a copy of your site and move it to my development site? Search engines aren't going to be in there because I just I stopped them from getting into all that stuff. But it's a completely different site. It's not touching yours, and I can show you how to, and I can tell this to the to the uh, prospective um, customer, I can tell you how to go in and give me the two files that I need to recreate your site. And I never have to have any passwords for your project. I can look at everything that I need to from the stuff in this copy, and I can look at what's going on in your live site just by looking at the code and looking at stuff that we know where to look. So. Okay. That's the kind of person that you want. When they say, well, I'll take I'll take a copy and, and look at it over on this other development site, staging site, great. That's that's actually a, a pretty good thing. So there's a good place to start with finding a decent developer. Okay, well, I found you, so I think I'm going to rock with you. <laughs> oh, no. Good for you, Kay. <laughs> yeah, get in touch. It, Whatever you need, just get in touch and, and I'll let you know what's going on. Thanks. Uh, Robert, you had your hand up. Is it getting tired? I was going to say another thing, Kate. Look at what those um, people soliciting the services, at least the ones I get, they always seem to come from Gmail addresses. Yeah. And you would think if somebody's selling something, it would be their name at their webs or yep. their domain, yep. uh, whatever it is. You would think they'd want to show off what they can do on their site. And why are they saying they're in a Gmail? account that's that that's true too i never thought about it no i i really don't like them if they come from gmail or some other uh free especially aol <laughs> <laughs> not aol <laughs> i've seen them come from yeah. aol and i always laugh i go i didn't know anybody still using aol and if it's a developer you can be sure they're not from the u.s using aol yeah, and usually your hosting device or whoever your hosting agent is can provide you with a professional URL for your website. Like mine is michael at mfjs.com, and you can do the same thing on yours. And any legitimate person will probably have something very similar to that. Well, on a second note on that, I have, you can actually, for those junk mails, you'll see dot com. On them, yeah. but the way to the way to check that is copy the the back end of that. The after the asterisk, copy the domain name, and then search it and see what you come up with. You know, because there's there's a lot of um, emails that I get that that have the web uh, the domain name on them, and either the domain will be parked or it doesn't even exist or it's hidden. Oh yeah, yeah. So, Maury's Mor chomping at the bit. Go ahead, Maury. Well, I was just going to say, Robert brought up a very good point. And, and staying with the theme we've talked about, if you go look at a web developer's website, how they do something is how they do everything, typically. 
So if they oh, wrote a pit slapping website, you yeah. can be pretty sure they're going to build you a pit slapping website. <laughs> so their work is usually going to be a pretty good sign of what you can expect from them. Well, don't go to mine. Mine's a mess. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was an ex, I was a, I'm an old painting contractor from eons ago, and it's like if you hire a painting contractor, if you go to their house, you'll see it's never painted because they don't have time to paint their own house. And like me, I don't have time to take care of my own website. So good luck on that one. <laughs> with painting, I get it. But with a website, that is your calling card. And if your calling card mm -hmm. is not speaking to your prospects, why would they hire you? Yeah. No one comes to your house and look at your house and your paint job before they hire you. But the internet, they sure as hell go to your website. They do. Yep. And, they do. and yet there are a lot of us good developers who are, God dang it, I need to do a lot of work on my site. Yeah. I'm no different. It's fast. A... It performs great. It has good information, but right. it's not done how I need to have it done. Yeah, and that's a mistake because people, unfortunately, on the internet, that's how they're going to judge you. Yeah. Yeah. It's getting the time. You just, it's like, boy, and I'm, I'm really close. I, if I'm talking about it, that means I'm close. I'm within a couple of weeks of getting it all done. <laughs> so, so I got to run. That's where I am, Maury. Does that make you happy? <laughs> <laughs> Michael, you got to bounce? Yeah, I got to bounce. All see right. you later. Take it easy. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Kay. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next <laughs> week. Right, we'll week. Next, next week is networking. Just networking next week. Mm -hmm. All right. Have a good one. Thanks, Kay. See you All later. Right, see you, Kay. Bye. Thanks for the information. You're welcome.